Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Hello, inspired listeners. This is Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on the Ohm Times Radio Net- Network. want to say happy Wisdom Wednesday to you where you will find Inspired Living Radio every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we take 60 minutes to explore, discover through body, mind, spirit, metaphysics, meditation, spirituality, consciousness, intuition, awareness. And today we're going to be getting a spiritual workout and we're going to be going over a handbook with our very special guest. But before we jump into the show, just want to say Happy Wisdom Wednesday to you. I'm Mark Lane Hart, the Intuitive Prospector, coming to you live here from my studio in Seattle, Washington. If you want to work with me directly, you can find me at marklanehart.com. You can internet search the Intuitive Prospector, and you can find me every Monday morning through Facebook Live and YouTube for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, which starts at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's inspirational messages for the week ahead, and followed right after, immediately after Metaphysical Mocha Mondays is my prospecting Q&A after show at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time where I have direct conversations with my uh, listeners, audience members, my clients, spiritual chats, readings. It's a whole lot of fun. So I hope that you'll join me. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube playlist, uh, Soul Adventures playlist on YouTube with over 200 videos, podcasts, dives, hikes, or what I like to call spiritual awesomeness. Today I'm hosting solo. Uh, Kim is off today, so just giving an inspired listening shout out to Kim, uh, who is uh, always learning and out as a student of life learning, and that's what she's doing today. So she'll be back next week, which is uh, shaping up to be a fantastic show as well for next week. So I'll give you a little bit more information about that uh, later in the show. But if you want to work with Kim Falcon, uh, who is the uh, amazing co-host who has been with me on this journey, this radio journey for four seasons now of Inspired Living Radio, you can find her information at lovefirst.info. She's located in her bicoastal practice of Richmond, Virginia, and Encino, California. And you can just do an internet search for Kim Falcon or Love First, and she will pull up. Uh, make sure to work with her. She does amazing work, and she's an amazing friend and colleague and co-host of Inspired Living Radio. If you are are listening to the live show right now thank you so much for tuning in uh, we have a global audience where you can listen in on any device from anywhere in the world uh, no username or password uh, needed for our show that's why we do uh, internet radio and that's why we love doing internet radio because the reach is just literally global it, but if you missed the live show today uh We have uh, Encore shows that stream through several different platforms, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Podbean, MarkLeanHeart.com, LoveFirst.info, and of course, you can always go to Ohm Times Radio Archives, where you'll catch, oh, I think 150-some shows that we've done now uh, over the last uh, four seasons of Inspired Living Radio. If you want to work with us on social media, you can catch our main page, which is Facebook, uh, under Inspired Living Radio. That's the one page that we monitor during the live show. So if you have a question for today, which we're going to be talking about the handbook of spiritual workout and what that means and and how um, that works in our lives. So if you have a question, uh, you can call in live to our live call in uh, number, which is 202 570-7057. Uh, Chris, our producer, will put you in the waiting room until we can bring you live to air. Uh, If you have a question related to today's topic, 
You can also post that question if you don't want to come live on on air with us. You can post that question to our Facebook page, Inspired Living Radio. We also have Twitter and Instagram uh, pages, which is Inspired For Us. That is the number four. And with every show that we do, we like to have a positive affirmation. And the positive affirmation for this month is pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Positive mind, positive life. How simple is that? that. So let's get into the show. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a little bit of a workout, I think, and we're going to uh, invite our guest on to the show, Stephen Morrison. He's a former psychotherapist, creator of Spiritual Workout, which we're going to be talking about today. He's also the founder of the Consciousness Company. Company. It's hard to say that. I tried practicing that before the show. Conscious Company. It's a tongue twister. Author of An Extra Year and a Man Who is Happiest When Writing in a Number of Formats. He reports that his practice, spiritual workout, is what allowed him, one, to say good riddance to the safety of the corporate world to be an entrepreneur. Boy, can I relate to that. Two, to thrive in the wake of his partner's death in a way that grew his soul and increased his capacity to love. And three, to recover from the experience, circa 2008, of losing his house, his home, and all kinds of things during the global financial meltdown while launching a new business. He is obsessed with creating a world that works for everyone by bringing his brand of everyday higher consciousness to traditionally underserved communities wherever they are. And Stephen, you're a perfect fit for Inspired Living Radio. Welcome, my friend, to Inspired Living Radio. Well, thanks so much, Mark, for having me. I'm really happy to be with you. Well, happy to have you here today. Let's just jump right into the uh, the book, uh, and let's because uh, it goes by. This hour goes by so quick, and I I don't want to uh, miss anything. But let's talk about the handbook. Let's talk about um, I, I called it a workbook for me. It was kind of when I was reading through, it was kind of like a workbook for me how I could apply different things. But you know, it's it's a lot of the fifteen ancient universal spiritual concepts, and I would. Figured we could uh, share that with the listening audience today about what those universal spiritual concepts are and how can we apply them to our everyday life. Well, sure. I'm happy to list the concepts. And then let me just say something about the handbook, the workbook that, that you referred <laughs> yeah, to. Sure. I, I wound up writing it because people kept asking me, you know, it, it was to answer the question for somebody that really had no idea, what is spiritual workout? Because it's a very dynamic practice. It's usually based on, if not one-on-one -on -one sessions, much more for me, you know, group classes and, you know, people coming in and I never know who's going to be there, and who's going to raise their hand and what we're going to talk about. But the one thing that remains consistent throughout is what do any of the issues and challenges of our everyday life look like through any or all of these concepts. So in a class, the concepts just get, you know, bounced around one after the other after the other. Writing it down in this format was something I resisted for a long time because it doesn't really come out the way that it happens in a real class. On the other hand, it does serve <laughs> as an introduction to what we're doing. And what I've also learned is that it's a real good reference for people that have had some experience, might have stepped away for a bit, and then they go back to the handbook and they kind of remind themselves. So to answer your question, the concept, and for the listening audience, the concepts that we're talking about, and then we'll get into whatever questions you have. Uh, would you like me to just list them? So everybody knows what we're talking about here. Yeah, let's dive right into it. Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So the concepts that make up the spiritual workout practice are be compassionate, beliefs matter, be present, voices abound, everything is energy, have an attitude of gratitude, intentions matter, judgments separate us, listen to inspiration, Mind and body are connected. Take responsibility. The law of attraction is always on. We are all connected. We are here for a reason. And finally, we belong to the planet, not the planet to us. That's it. Oh, my goodness. So many good nuggets there, you know, as a prospector in search of my own golden spiritual nuggets. The one that really sticks out in, in all of those is the attitude, have an attitude for gratitude, especially if you're having a real 
just bummer of a day, low vibration day, I always go back to, you know, the attitude for gratitude because there's so much to be thankful for and it can change your mindset when you're having a bad day. So I definitely resonate with that. Um, yeah, me too, for sure. And, you know, I, you can tell. <laughs> Everyone can tell. I didn't make these concepts up at all. But as I was going through, you know, a phase of my life where I was asking all these questions we ask about mm -hmm. who am I, what's my purpose, what the heck am I doing here, what am I supposed to be doing, and, you know, reading books and going to workshops and all of that, you know, in not too long a period of time, I kind of thought, is it me or is everybody essentially saying the same thing? So I kind of said, well, what, what is everyone saying? Essentially, and so you know, I kind of culled it down to these 15. Could have been 12, could have been 18. But what mm -hmm. I have found over the years is that for most of us who are just living our lives and being greeted with all manner of challenges, from relationship issues to health issues to identity issues to loss issues, and and all the things that most of us contend with, I've never worked with anybody wasn't able to move through the issue that they were having and then live the rest of their life without that issue happening when they really engaged in this practice. And that makes sense to me because these, these ideas have been here for our guidance for millennia. And so spiritual workout is just about let's practice this in the nitty gritty of everyday life on the ground and take it out of the theoretical and into the practical. That's really, for me, what it's all about. Yeah, the application of it, too. Because back in 2008, as you were plugging along, and I'm, I'm with you on the 2008, you know, global meltdown, I was actually working for <laughs> one of the uh, large banks here in Seattle, Washington at that time, and I actually ended up being part of the biggest bank failure in U.S. history. Uh, and so 2008 definitely stands out to me. But for you, you lost your house. You lost your partner. I always you know, remind our listening audience that usually a shakening causes an awakening where we start to go, okay, there's got to be more than this. There, we're, we're, we're more than what we perceive to be in that, that application of what you're talking about. And hence, in 2013, the Spiritual Workout Handbook was written by you and, and then, you know, um, sent out to become other people's reality with this book, which I found, find very fascinating. So for our listening audience, if you want to, uh, if, if you're listening to the live show right now, or if you catch this on the podcast, uh, you can go to spiritualworkout.com and also get a, uh, a visual aspect of what uh, Stephen and I are talking about today on the spiritual workout. And I knew I was going to like the handbook. I'll stop calling it a workbook because uh, <laughs> for, for me, it is, it is called the handbook, but I always just, I kind of approached it as a workbook format so I could try to apply actually what we're talking about. How do I apply the things that are in this handbook? And I liked it right from the beginning because chapter one, uh, was right up take responsibility so let's uh we're gonna have our first break coming up here in a few minutes but let's talk about chap chapter one and taking responsibility because i can tell you as a light worker as a radio show host as a as a um uh, psychic medium uh, as a teacher people want to put that responsibility on us a lot of times and that's not that's not what we do and we're not here to take other people's responsibility exactly and what i've seen mark is that we, you know, we're all well-intended, but on this particular concept, we seem to have it upside down. I come across people every day mm -hmm. who are more than willing to take responsibility for things that are not their responsibility at all. You know, whether it's their right. kid or their, you know, friends or their coworkers or whatever. And then they really, really resist taking responsibility themselves. And yet it's chapter one in there because I think that unless we're willing to do that, everything else just sort of falls apart. So like for me, spiritual workout was not a new practice for me when the global financial meltdown thing happened. And I just happened to have a whole lot of cash that disappeared when, mm -hmm. because it was in my house, right? Yeah. Didn't we all? And, um, <laughs> so, 401ks, right retirements. There, right, right, right. So right then and there, it was like, well, oh, it would have been easy to blame Wall Street fat cats. It would have been easy to blame the economy. It would have been easy to blame, you know. And I said, well, that just doesn't 
really fly. I'm still an individual human being, spiritual being, having a human experience. I still create my own reality. I'm still responsible for everything. And I have to say that just doing that on day one empowered me. It empowers all of us when we take responsibility. As hard as it can be to take responsibility, I find, is um, there's a correlation to the benefit of it in terms of empowerment. Because instead of sitting there and blaming all kinds of other things, abstract and otherwise, I said, okay, well, here I am. I've created an experience that uh, is right here, right now. I'm responsible for that. And then go from that place. Well, Stephen, you make a good point. Here, right now, and that's that's a lot of what I teach on as well, the finding the magic in the moment. Because a lot of times our memories create a past that's not real. Our imagination creates a future that's not real. And there's so much that's going on in the magic of the moment that we miss because we're so mindful of the future and the past that we're not paying attention to our present moment. So we're going to be going to our first break. Uh, here and I just want to remind our listening audience uh, today's guest is Stephen Morrison and we're talking about the spiritual workout handbook if you want to learn more about this uh, this wonderful handbook you can go to spiritualworkout.com we're going to be back here in two minutes after a brief commercial break thank you so much for listening to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim we'll be back in two The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T.info for more information. Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Death Row Dogs Rescue is a 100% all-volunteer, no-kill rescue 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are run solely by volunteers who dedicate their time and resources for the past 30 years to rescuing homeless pets from the streets in Los Angeles and surrounding areas and from city and county animal shelters who are on death row often moments away from being euthanized. We provide housing, medical care, and training to these neglected, abused, and often severely injured animals. Donate now, save a life, and allow these beautiful dogs to experience a home life filled with love. All donations are greatly appreciated and are tax deductible. Please visit www.deathrowdogsrescue.com to see some of our amazing dogs who need homes. Do not breed or buy. Make adoption your first option.
And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on the Ohm Times Radio Network, the voice of consciousness. I want to just remind our listening audience today, if you do want to call in and you have a question uh, about the spiritual workout handbook that we're talking about today with our special guest, Stephen Morrison, uh, calling in live from uh, Los Angeles, California, uh, you can call in at 202 202- Five seven zero seven zero five seven. You can also post a question on our Facebook page, which is Inspired Living Radio. We're actually hosting a watch party right now, so if you want to post a question uh, for Stephen or myself, uh, please feel free to do so. And for all of our Inspired listeners out there, if you uh, want to uh, catch me daily, I'm now running through the Alexa app in the uh, Echo Pods, I guess is what you call them. Just got to ask Alexa to open up a positive living application and you'll get daily tips from me on how the spirit world can connect uh, to us through signs, symbols, synergy, synchronistic events. And it's just a fun way to get your day started by opening up the positive li- living app through the Alexa or Echo Pods. And I'm uh, very excited to be a part of that program now. And again, just a, a way to reach you uh, daily, weekly, monthly for inspired uh, affirmations positive living, uh, inspired living, and again, that attitude for gratitude that we were talking about, Stephen, before the first break. So welcome back, my friend. We were talking about your first chapter, which I found very important to take responsibility uh, for our journey and who we are and where we're going. Uh, let's uh, continue the conversation. Let's jump. Uh, let's go deep into this uh, this handbook, and let's continue to, to keep the conversation going. Great. So, uh, Stephen, you you have a couple events coming up real quick just for um, the listening audience. Uh, if you want to just uh, announce that real quick and we'll get those uh, out there for everybody to hear. And if they want to sign up or take advantage of the special that you're offering, because you, off, you offer a lot of different things. You offer private sessions, your own personal retreat, classes. So um, real quick for our listening right. audience. Yeah, well, the main thing for most people um, – uh, what I, the, I wanted to make spiritual workout as accessible as possible to as many people as possible, much like you and Kim are doing with your show. And so I just launched online recently, and every single week I offer three classes. Well, one class and two clinics. The one class is just called the Spiritual Workout, a drop-in class. It's the flagship spiritual workout uh, experience, if you will. As I was saying earlier, I never know who's going to show up. I don't know who's going to raise their hand and what issues we are going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, you come to that class a few times, you start hearing about taking responsibility, you start hearing about beliefs, you start hearing about intentions, and your perspective starts to shift. And it's really, it's really dynamic, and I think it's really fun. Um, And two things that really support the spiritual workout practice that I'm blabbering about all the time, one of one of them is (laughs) the concept intentions matter. You know, I barely start having a conversation with somebody and I say, well, you have a shiny, clear intention for that. Right. Or how's that intention coming? Or what does that intention sound like? And uh, setting intentions to me is just critical when it comes Mm -hmm. to conscious living. So I offer a clinic every week for people. You know, we take people through a specific process for setting intentions. It's a, it's a dynamic process in and of itself. It's not as simple as it sounds, and it's not just a sticky on the refrigerator. So um, we offer that. Also, I've become somewhat of an um, EFT um, aficionado or uh, champion or supporter. I think EFT tapping is a tremendous tool. Uh, we use it in all kinds of ways. And so I offer a clinic every week for that as well. So the, the drop-in class is 90 minutes every Monday evening. The clinics are each on Tuesday and Wednesday morning, each for half an hour live online. Um, that's all run through my Patreon page. But if you just go to spiritualworkout.com and just look for the tile that says Patreon, click on there, and it will give you all the information for that. You can attend all three of those classes every week for a low membership fee of fifty dollars. So I don't want to go on and on and on. About it. Yeah, no, that's that, uh, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and you offer you're also so you go to spiritualworkout.com and then Patreon uh, is where the classes are actually held. Like the live in, are they live interactive classes with you or are they recordings? They're live interactive and every class is recorded. So if you and happen to recorded. register, yeah. 
and so you can you can watch replays. So yeah, it's pretty it's really pretty cool. And we're just getting started. So I'm eager for more and more people to come over, and you can try it for as little as five dollars a month. So like I say, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, um, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Well, hopefully, Inspired Living Radio can help and assist. That's what we do. It takes a village, right, to uh, get this indeed. get this consciousness out there. And for our listening audience that might not be aware of EFT or tapping, can you just give a little yeah. bit more um, insight for what that is? Sure. Well, it's this um, crazy combination of ancient acupressure and modern talk therapy. So I used to be a therapist, and I think that might be why I took to this modality so readily. The idea is that as we move through life and we just don't process things, you know, we see something when we're nine years old and we don't really know what to make of it and we make something of it anyway, but we never talk about it. Or we just something just happens yesterday with our partner and we don't feel like addressing it or really, you know, whatever it is, our unprocessed material, according to this modality, collects in these parts of our body, which is really our subconscious, um, and just kind of stagnates there. So the idea is that as we tap literally on these acupressure points on our body, while at the same time we just talk about what's going on, the energy really shifts. So it's the kind of modality that really (laughs) can be used to address all manner of things. You know, I work with people with beliefs. It's like, well, I know I shouldn't have this belief that I'm not good enough, but I've had it for so long. How do I ever change it? Well, tapping is a real effective way to shift that energy and loosen it up and turn it into something else. I came down like two days ago. I'm one of those people that, quote, unquote, never gets sick, right? And all of a sudden, here I was. I was kind of getting stuffed up, coughing, and maybe running a little bit of a fever. And I used tapping to tap that right out of me. And within 24 hours, I was way, 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 way better, probably 92% better. Uh, it, it's sort of a tonic. It helps virtually everything. And I think that every single one of us uh, can really benefit from just learning how to use it and all the different ways in which to use it. And they're sort of endless. And again, that's why I run the clinic, just to give people more opportunity to practice and learn. Well, and I love that you're using tapping as a way to clear your energy is, is a um, holistic approach versus taking a whole bunch of medicines or, you know, uh, different cough syrups or things that are loaded with just, you yeah. know, who knows what. So I love that that natural approach. And for our listening audience, if you don't if you're not familiar with pressure points, I first became aware of pressure points with my background in law enforcement when I was in the U.S. Coast Guard. And if you don't believe in pressure points, uh, have somebody show you a certain few pressure points and you'll realize that just how how real they are um, and they actually use pressure point techniques in law enforcement uh, as well um, not that you're going to do that with with the tapping modality but it just shows that that touch and certain pressure points on the body can do amazing things and that you know it makes me think of what Nick Tesla always talked about if you want to unlock the secrets of the universe you think in terms of energy you think in terms of uh, uh, frequency and vibration and you and I are on the same vibration and frequency because you're talking about intent as well I'm a firm believer that energy always follows your intent. So in the in the in the book you talk about in the handbook you talk about the law of attraction is always on. What do you mean by that? Pretty much exactly what it says. Like we don't get a vacation from it and it's just a reminder that every single thought we have and you know the teachers I've heard and maybe you've heard something similar Mark, you know, say we have you know, about 90,000 thoughts a day. Every single one of those is creating more of the same and attracting more of the same. And mm-hmm. even even bigger, if you will, or not more importantly, but maybe more importantly, is every feeling we have goes out there into the ethers and attracts more feeling like it. So the law of attraction is always on, just reminds me that it's really important <laughs> to be conscious and awake and aware of what it is I'm thinking and what it is I'm feeling because I'm just getting more of it. So I, you know, I, I have seen so many negative, really harsh, judgmental 
comments and thoughts and ideas about this Mm -hmm. seemingly obvious universal law, as we say, called the law of attraction, and where people just think it's, oh, it's big marketing hoax, or it's a scam, or it's a... Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. I tried it once, you know, that kind of thing. And I, I, I understand that, I guess, to a point. But for me, it doesn't change the fact that the law of attraction is always on. You know, it's so, I, I, I'm one of those people. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a, an investigator. I just try things out in my own life. And if they make sense, I go with it. And if I don't, mm-hmm. if they don't, I just throw them away. I know that when I hold up my pencil, you know, over my head, if I release it, it's going to fall to the floor. That's called the law of gravity. Right, right. right I don't right. I don't care personally how or why that happens. That's just me. But I trust that it's always going to happen. And I just think of the law of attraction as the exact same way. But again, not just because somebody told me, because as soon as I started to learn about it and put it to to the test in my own life, I could see obviously how it was working. And the easiest way to see it was to look backwards, you know, to look at Mm. something that was going in my life today that Mm -hmm. I really, that was sort of unwelcome and unwanted or chronic, chronically awful, like always having bad relationships or never having enough money or whatever it is. And then you find out. So just in class the other night, um, somebody was talking about having a day job and she's a professional and she makes good money doing what she's doing, but she just sort of landed in it and she has no desire to really do it and blah, 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 blah. It turns out she has a belief, right? That Mm -hmm. says I have to work hard and sacrifice for money. I have to work hard and sacrifice for money. Well, that's exactly what she's doing today. She's working hard (laughs) and sacrificing for money. So that is how the law of attraction works. You, you think that thought long enough, it turns into a belief, you continue to fuel it, you get evidence of it, and it just becomes a hamster wheel that unless you consciously on purpose jump off of, you can see, you know, it's not going to change. So I'm inspired by the idea that the law of attraction is always on, never takes a vacation, to just be more and more conscious about how I'm thinking, what I'm saying, how I'm feeling, and all of it. Yeah, and you talk about that in the in the handbook as well as far as beliefs matter. And, you know, um, one of the concepts, you know, just thinking on thoughts as well, you know, one of the things that's really helped me is become mindful of my thoughts because your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your behavior. So it all starts with thought. And, you know, if if you're thinking, you know, thousands of thoughts every day, a lot of people think the same thoughts day in and day out, kind of like Groundhog Day, right? And, yeah. you know, the, the difference is, okay, how can you become mindful of your thoughts so your, your brain isn't always going? Because the thoughts are going to be there until the day that you actually, you know, move back into the spirit world. But it's how do you discipline the mind to be aware of the thoughts that you're having? Because not all you don't have to believe all your thoughts. Not all the thoughts that you're thinking are actually true or accurate. And, you know, it's been interesting, too, Stephen, that they've been doing studies because we have so much going on in our world, you know, with all the different uh, visual of television and the applications on our smart technology and our uh, computers that people are starting to develop Alzheimer's and dementia at younger ages. And it just kind of makes me think, are we just burning our brains out because we're thinking, we're overthinking? You know, it reminds me of the, the quote from Charlie Chaplin, who I admire. Um, you know, he said that we think too much and we feel too little. And, you know, so there's a there's a sense of, you know, uh, health uh, matters as well as far as your thoughts and what your thoughts are doing and what they're saying and where they're taking you. Because you're right, they become the belief system based off your thoughts. Well, I think that the thing that can, because it could get overwhelming to think, okay, I have 90,000 thoughts a day. Now I have to monitor mm-hmm. every single one of them and make sure they're clean and pure and da, da, da. What right, I right. think really helps with that is, again, recognizing, remembering that the law of attraction is always on, that we're getting more and more of what we're thinking about. If we accept, if we're present and accept everything that's happening right now as it is, and we want something else, then the best way I think to manage all that is to set shiny, clear intentions for where we want to go. That will really help us to organize our thoughts because no sooner do we put our foot on the gas of something that we, of expressing 
something that we want to be or do or have, then all the thoughts and ideas we have about why that can't happen come rising to the surface. Then we can see very clearly the thoughts we're having that do not serve us, that are not in alignment where we, with where we want to go and contend with them from that place, if that makes sense. Oh, very much so. And, you know, I was just... The other thing, you know, every seven years, I'm just thinking of from a, you know, anatomy and physiology approach uh, with my background in medicine. They talked about even at the cellular level, every seven years, all of the cells within your body die off and, are, and new cells are created. So literally every seven years, you have an opportunity to be a new person and move forward with what you want. You don't have to wait seven years, but I'm just saying from a biology standpoint, we are constantly recreating ourselves. And, and really now, how do we get our thoughts to be in the present moment? And, and you're right, we don't want to monitor 90,000 thoughts in a day to go along with the rest <laughs> of our stuff that's going on. What is something that you could do? Yeah, a huge to-do list that we already wake up with and then add 90,000 <laughs> thoughts on top of that. Just kind of right. just for the listening audience, what's something – what's an exercise or what's something that we could do from the handbook, the spiritual workout handbook? Let's say I come to you, Stephen, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just overloaded. I'm over. There's too much thought. There's too – that to-do list just keeps growing. I can't seem to catch up. What would uh, – something as an instructor or teacher, how would you help me? What would you what would you lead me to or where would you help me to go prospecting for that, that spiritual gold of peace and relaxation and rejuvenation that I seek? Well, if it's hard to keep up, I would first just start to ask you about, well, what would it be like for you to be kept up, like, or up mm. to date? Or what, what does that look or sound like to you? Okay. Because that uh, right there puts us – go ahead. Oh, I was just, well, I'm just thinking about, <laughs> we're kind of doing a live exercise here on the air. I'm yeah. thinking, well, I'm pretty mindful of what I do in a day, um, but mm -hmm. I would say, I always like to say, I, I like to take the time to disconnect so I have time to reconnect to what's really important in life and kind of let all the other, uh, you know, other noise kind of fall to the side, I guess is how I'd answer that. And And just real quickly, what's like one big benefit of that for you? The benefit for me is I, I feel like my it, my stress level comes down. I feel like my breathing is a little bit, you know, more um, not heavy breathing or not, you know, out of forgetting to breathe. And when I become more uh, consciousness of, you know, not having this huge to-do list, I'm just more aware of the things that are around me, uh, nature, um, you know, just little things around my house, stuff like that. So, um Hold that thought. We're going to come back. We're going to pick this back up here in two minutes as we go into our last break uh, with our special guest today, Stephen Morrison, talking about the Spiritual Workout Handbook here on Inspired Living Radio. The Cutting Edge of Conscious Radio. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart. The Intuitive Prospector is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. 
Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve! By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim. Today's special guest, Stephen Morrison, talking about the Spiritual Workout Handbook. Right before the break there, uh, Stephen, we were right in the middle of the exercise, and I was just uh, I was describing how I become more aware when I have less to think about on that to-do list or, you know, what's going on mm-hmm. in the day. And I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, too. Tech is Technology is playing a role in this because with my uh, iWatch that I have, I've got an app that reminds me to breathe or to stand or to move every so often. So I get these reminders as well. It's like, okay, don't sweat the small stuff. Focus on your breath. Get up and walk around. Have some energy. Uh, and that leads me to one of my favorite chapters of the handbook is chapter nine because I'm a big science guy. I like that spirituality and science can shake hands and they're both starting to intertwine a little bit more. Back in the day, there used to be a complete separation between uh, the two. And they're finding, you know, in chapter nine, you talk about energy as everything, kind of that same concept I was talking with Nikola Tesla and science and spirituality Mm -hmm. converging, uh, you know, an agreement that everything is energy. And what I love about it is... (laughs) exactly what you're saying now that the two are shaking hands and coming together i as somebody who happens to not care a whole lot about well it's not that i don't care um i just see science and spirituality as kind of two languages right i Mm -hmm. speak fluent spirituality and i know a few words in science and i'm not trying to be bilingual right and so Mm -hmm. what i love about this moment that we're living in is i'm sort of now absolved you know, if somebody wants to challenge me on any of these concepts, not that I really am here to defend them in any way, but there, there are scientific explanations for them that other people have developed and can, that I can point them to. And so I don't have to uh, have to do that. Yeah, exactly. And you talk about, you know, physics 101. And I always like to say spirituality is is what we already know that physics is, you know, catching up to. Um, you know, we're kind of out, you know, for those of us that, that see in an unseen world or feel or, you know, trust our intuition and our awareness. Um, and this has been, you know, centuries past, you know, mystics and seers and people with psychic abilities. This is, you know, this is nothing new, but science is really starting to get on board that, yeah, everything is energy and you can tune in, you know, like I said, when you think of terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, things in the universe really start to change and, and it changes your belief systems. I'm, I can definitely speak to that. I, you know, my belief system changed with my own near death experience, uh, you know, severe tragedies of both my brothers, you know, being uh, taken from us, um, you know, in a in a uh, tragic way from brain cancer to murder. And your belief system has changed literally overnight. And, you know, oh, yeah. it's in the handbook, you talk about why it's easy to change the beliefs. I thought it'd be interesting to just talk a little bit more about that because belief systems are very important, but they also drive a, a lot of who we are and, and how we perceive the world. Right. Well, the problem with that is, you know, we, we, we take on beliefs, whether it's because we make a decision or reach a conclusion about something we witness when we're too young to know better or because we just swallow them whole from, you know, parents and family members and community and, and culture. Um, the, the, what I say about everything being energy, it's not necessarily that it's so easy to change the belief, but it's the reason that we know we can. We know right. that however entrenched the belief I can't is, can 
ultimately be transmuted and transformed into I can because everything is energy. And all, like I said, physics 101, all we know is that energy doesn't get created or destroyed. It just changes form. That's how we know that the belief, no matter how hard it seems, can really be changed, right? And the prob- what I was going to say before, the, the problem, quote unquote, with it is when we take on these beliefs, especially when we're young and we grow up with them, they feel like who we are. And so we struggle mm-hmm. with letting yeah. go of them because we feel like we're letting go of ourselves. You know, we identify so strongly with them, they feel like part of us. And then even if we reach the intellectual understanding that, oh, I can see this really doesn't serve me, but I just don't know how I'm going to change it. Well, you don't have to necessarily know how. You just have to kind of want to change it, and we go from there. And again, that's where EFT can help so well. Mm -hmm. Wants and intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just bypasses. Another thing I love about EFT is the mind-body connection. It really, it addresses the conscious and the subconscious at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking when you're talking about the beliefs, there's an acceptance too, because when you are when you go into a belief system, there's an acceptance. It could be your family. It could be um, your friends. And so, you know, trying to break that, that routine as well, as far as the belief system that may be installed as a young child can be very um, difficult as well, because there's an acceptance uh, with that, that I was just thinking of. And, you know, you know, when my belief system started to change, you know, as a retired firefighter EMT, I remember working on somebody that was that had had a heart attack and we think of terms of energy you know like you just said energy always has to go somewhere or it transforms uh it doesn't just cease to exist and i've always thought of this um with the energy in the heart we know everything you know from medicine to anatomy and physiology we know how the heart works we know the chambers we know the veins the arteries the aorta but we don't know where that energy that makes the heart pump come from. We call it some of it, you know, some people will call it the God spark. Uh, some call it the God within, uh, but it's an energy that goes somewhere after the heart stops. And when I, I remember working on this gentleman who had a heart attack and unfortunately he did not make it and he passed into the spirit world, but I remember him standing outside of his body looking at me as I'm working on him. And that for me was, for my belief system, that was very eye-opening uh, to be like, okay, I'm working on a gentleman's heart here. We're shocking him. We're doing all sorts of things, IVs and meds to get the heart you know, stimulated to shock it, to get it going again. And I can literally see the guy looking down at me on the floor. <laughs> so for me, that was where my belief system really started to change because I'm like, why am I seeing this? Uh, and that w- that began my spiritual journey. And this was several years ago, but it, you know, it was very eye-opening to see that, but it, it just reminds me of the energy of the heart. And in one of the chapters of the book, you talk about listen to inspiration. I always like to say that the heart and the soul will lead you and guide you, but it will not govern you. And in the, uh, the, the handbook, you talked about listen to the inspiration, which I think is very important that people should do. Do you want to talk a little bit more uh, in depth about that as well? Well, sure. You know, I think that this is, so I call spiritual workout spiritual workout. And I come, my original, my first career was marketing. And for the longest time, I was like, are you sure you want to use the word spiritual? Who's going to, there's so many people are going to be turned off of that. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's like the and word I thought psychic. about it for a long, long time. Exactly. Psychic or consciousness. It's like all the words that I love the most are the most controversial. So, you know, I just ultimately said, you know what? It is what it is. This is the spiritual part of us, the idea that there's something more than just what's contained in our physical bodies that is connected to something else and connects us all to each other. So to me, that's about as spiritual, woo-woo, wacky as the whole thing gets, but it's an acknowledgement that that component of the human experience exists. I think I, I use this term all the time, and I think I first read it in Eckhart Tolle's book, you know, we are both human and being, right? So I'm always talking to the exactly. being part, to the being part of the human beings we are. And so that's what all of that falls under the spiritual workout concept, as I say, it, listening to inspiration, meaning there is that piece of us. Now, when it comes to, um, so first it's our responsibility 
to understand how spirit is communicating with us. How do we receive our guidance? You might receive most of yours in dreams. I might receive most of mine in vision, um, mm-hmm. you know, in my ears. I literally hear it in my head or something, right? And, you know, there are not necessarily infinite ways that it happens, but it's going to be somewhat different for all of us, right? So first, it's, it's understanding how do we receive those messages and then learning to listen to them. And then the next part, which is where a lot of us really struggle, is then choosing to follow what it says. And, you know, to me, this Mm -hmm. is just practice. So if I'm working with somebody, you know, leadership, quote unquote, is a big uh, thing these days and has been for a while in the whole, you know, uh, professional development world. And to me, if you're cultivating, if you have an intention to be a strong leader, it is fundamentally going to come from your ability and willingness to listen to inspiration. Because what that does is it instills and engenders confidence. And I think confidence is what creates a good leader, right? That's Mm -hmm. that, that person who just stands there and is somewhat unflappable because that person is connected to that non-physical part of themselves has moved into that place where they trust that guidance and they follow it. They have experience doing that, which builds their confidence. And so they attract people to them. You know, people want to be around them. People want to work with them. And I don't know. I don't think it's conceptually such a crazy idea, but it's, we don't all have that skill very well developed. Right, right. Well, and I always like to say when my belief system started changing, I started to go down the spiritual or consciousness or awareness path. I kept telling myself, you know, I, I accept that there may be things far more magnificent, majestic, or mystifying than we can possibly possibly perceive. And that's where, you know, my even my journey as the intuitive prospector, because I wanted to go out and prospect for all the different things that are around us. You know, I think of it in terms of the past, present, future is happening simultaneously all around us, and everything that we need to know uh, from consciousness to mathematics to medicine is all available. It's what are we doing to connect into that conscious source, that knowledge, that wisdom, that enlightenment, if you will, uh, because it is accessible to anybody listening to today's show. It's just, what are you doing? Are you taking the time to disconnect so you can reconnect? Or Rumi reminds us the more silent and still we become, the more we can actually hear. What would you recommend for, you know, in the, in the handbook uh, for people to get into that connection, that inspiration of finding the, the life that they've always dreamed of. Spend some time alone, spend some time in quiet meditation, of course. Uh, but for a lot of people who find it difficult to meditate, quote unquote, and put all kinds of pressure on themselves, you know, take a nice walk in the woods for a few hours by yourself, you know, just giving having time to yourself, which I think a lot of people just are not so comfortable with because you'll never hear your inspiration if you're inundated all day long with other noise and information and input and all of that. So fundamentally, finding a way to be with oneself is really what it's about. And again, if meditation doesn't doesn't do it for you, find some, something that will. Yeah, and there's different modalities of meditation. I learned that in my graduate studies in sports medicine that, you know, Absolutely. walking the dog, uh, getting out, like you said, nature, which I have always said that is our greatest teacher, our greatest healer, and our greatest engineer of how, you know, based on nature works. Uh, do a garden, uh, read a book, write a book like you did. I'm sure that was a form of meditation for you to write this handbook. Uh, to share with other people and bring into my reality, uh, right? I always say that things are born twice, first in our mind, and if we don't do anything with it, it's just a daydream. But then what actions and intentions we take to bring into other people's realities. And I, I you know, Stephen, I really enjoyed 
uh, the handbook. Uh, like I said, I was calling it a workbook in the beginning because I was really trying to apply it and try to take some of the, the golden nuggets that are in here and apply it to um, you know, to my path, because we are here for a reason. You talk about that in the handbook. And, you know, uh, we are looking for passion and purpose, because without that passion and purpose in life, then life can be very lonely and, and very low vibration. And, and here on Inspired Living Radio, that's why we do what we do, is to inspire and to lift people up and to bring people together. And I, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show today. And what I like to do uh, with the just the few minutes that we have left here, Stephen, uh, who who or what inspires you? The thing that inspires me the most on this planet is authentic, real, fun, dynamic, interesting connection with other human beings. I mean, I love nothing more than to be in nature by myself, like we were talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the other piece of that is just meeting up with other humans where it's just, where you just love it. You're just like, oh, hi, there you are. And let's just share some time. I don't think there's anything for me that's more inspiring than that. Well, I love that. Very well said, my friend. Thank you so much for being a guest today on the show. The Spiritual Workout Handbook by Stephen Morrison. You can learn more about uh, his work, uh, this wonderful handbook at spiritualworkout.com. Again, some great stuff today. We talked about, you know, being compassionate, how our beliefs matter, being present, choices abound, everything is energy, have an attitude for gratitude, intentions matter, judgments separate us. Listen to inspiration, mind and body are connected, take responsibility, all great nuggets for the journey, the spiritual path ahead. Stephen, thank you so much. Hope to have you back here on Inspired Living Radio and continue the conversation on a spiritual workout. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, Mark, to you and to Kim. Take care. Yes, Kim. She'll be back next week. So until our next uh, Wisdom Wednesday or our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste. Namaste. 